All right, my friend, welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm the founder here at The Fit Father Project. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about artificial sweeteners and gut bacteria. How do artificial sweeteners affect our gut microbiome? Should we be concerned? What does the research actually say? So in this video, we're gonna cover all of that. We're gonna give you some simple science here. I'm gonna diagram here on the board, and I'm gonna give you our recommendations of what we feel is the best advice based on the available research. I know you're gonna learn a ton. So get out your pen and paper, take some notes, and let's dive on in. Fitfatherproject.com all right, so let's start discussing artificial sweeteners and gut bacteria. Um, and to really start this discussion, we need to talk about gut bacteria um, at a high level. Did you know that your human body has roughly 37 to 50 trillion cells, but you have 100 trillion cells of bacteria living throughout your digestive tract? I mean, that's more, you are more bacteria than you are human in a very real sense. And these bacteria live along our entire digestive tract from our mouth all the way down our esophagus to our stomach, our small intestine, our large intestine. And we know from the new research how important gut bacteria are. They help us digest and break down our food. They help increase our immune system that lines our entire digestive tract. They even communicate with our brain to tell us when we're full, to help us burn more calories and increase our metabolic rate. There is so much about gut bacteria of how important they are. And now we're also learning that some of the new things that we've created, like these artificial sweeteners, do have an effect on the gut bacteria. So we're gonna unpack this in today's video. And the main thing that we're gonna be basing today's video on is the compelling research that is now kind of known as the Israeli study on the gut microbiome. That basically was a study that looked at three of the most popular um, sweeteners, um, saccharin, Splenda and aspartame, and they compared the effect of what those sweeteners do to the gut bacteria and the microbiome compared to glucose and sucrose, so two very common sugars that we have in our diet. And what they found is that the artificial sweeteners um, do alter the proportion of the gut bacteria. In particular, they decrease a uh, genus of bacteria called bacterioides and they increase some of these bad guys called firmicutes. And what we find is that when this ratio of the bacterioides to firmicutes goes down, meaning more firmicutes, and that happens when we do have artificial sweeteners, that is positively correlated with insulin resistance, glucose intolerance, um, and obesity. So lean people and obese people, when we measure their different proportions of gut bacteria and what kinds of species they have in their bodies, um, obese people have higher amounts of firmicutes you know, typically speaking, and lean people have lower amounts of firmicutes. And we now know that the artificial sweeteners do preferentially uh, kill off some of the good bacteria and cause some of these bad bacteria to rise. And why does this actually contribute to obesity? Well, what we know is uh, species like firmicutes that thrive when we do have artificial sweeteners come into our system on a regular basis, they actually make more calories available to our bodies from the foods we eat. So get this, normally when we eat calories, our gut bacteria helps to kind of break some of those calories down. And a lot of those calories that we eat aren't actually absorbed. They get transferred, they get changed into short chain fatty acids from fiber and all sorts of different things happen. These gut bacteria metabolize the things we eat, but certain gut bacteria actually make some of these calories more bioavailable, which means more food we eat, more calories are absorbed, can promote obesity. And so we do know that there's a real effect of some of these artificial sweeteners negatively impacting the gut microbiome. So what do we do? Well, um, for the most part, we have to say first off that from this research um, that we don't know that if this is totally causal. You know, this is correlation does not totally mean causation. This is certainly not to say that if you have some artificial sweeteners in your diet, that you're gonna gain weight, you're gonna get insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, that's not necessarily going to happen. But I do think this research is compelling enough, particularly with saccharin, which is sweet and low, which is the worst artificial sweetener they found in the study, at least based on the impact of gut microbiome, that we should probably limit this and certainly shouldn't have these on an everyday basis. Because they do find that from some of these correlational studies that uh, people who have the highest intake of artificial sweeteners also tend to have the highest BMI and typically tend to be um, have higher weights. And we also know that if we take the gut bacteria of people who are obese, it is very similar to the changes that happen when you have artificial sweeteners in your body. And when we take good healthy gut bacteria and we transplant those into obese people and we change the composition of their gut microbiome, then people tend to lose weight. 
kind of automatically. So there's definitely something going on and we're still unpacking it from the research. So my current recommendation is that we avoid artificial sweeteners for the most part. Now it's not gonna hurt you if once in a while you go out to a bar with your friends and your family and you have a Jack and Diet Coke. That's not gonna send your body into some kind of diabetes um, kind of situation where your insulin's all dysregulated and all that stuff. That's not gonna happen. But if you are a type of person that's having artificial sweeteners on a daily basis, we do know that changes are likely happening in your body and it's probably not good. So what we do recommend is some natural sweeteners. We like things like xylitol, uh, monk fruit, stevia. These are typically safer and can be consumed on a daily basis. And that's not to say these things aren't without uh, their own side effects, but we do know from the research that some of these hardcore artificial sweeteners, again, saccharin being potentially the worst, aspartame being up there for other different reasons outside of the effects in the gut microbiome. And we also have Splenda. These are not the ideal choices. Let's go with some of the natural sweeteners. And we have another video below that summarizes uh, the research and some of the health dangers of artificial sweeteners outside of just strictly the impact on the gut microbiome. But this is compelling stuff and we need to protect our gut bacteria. We need to make sure we're getting good foods that contain probiotics on a regular basis. Fermented foods, things like sauerkraut, kimchi, certain kinds of yogurts if you can tolerate dairy. And we also want a lot of good healthy prebiotic fiber. You know, we want to have our fruits and our veggies because these are the fibers that these gut bacteria thrive on. And again, daily artificial sweeteners probably not a good idea based on the research. This is not to say that uh, correlation equals causation, but I think the research for me personally is compelling enough that I'm gonna keep these things out of my body, and I hope the same for you too. So I hope this was interesting. We are also gonna link below the full article to the Israeli studies. So you can actually look at the paper in Nature that shows and breaks down this research showing that saccharin is not good and that all these artificial sweeteners do have impacts on the gut microbiome. So I hope you found this helpful. If you like this and you want more health and fitness information on weight loss, nutrition, muscle building, how to get and stay motivated, then our team here at the Fit Follower Project is here for you and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We publish hundreds of videos every single year, roughly one video per day on new great topics like artificial sweeteners, proper meal plans. I know you're going to love it. So hit the subscribe button, check the little notification bell to get notified when we post new videos and we'd love to have you as a part of our family here at the Fit Follower Project. Thanks for being here my friend. If you enjoyed this, check out some of the links in the description as well to our free one day weight loss meal plan because if you're concerned about this kind of stuff and you also need to know the kind of foods to put into your body to help you thrive thrive, to lose weight, to stay lean and keep your gut bacteria healthy. We can help you with that as well in our free one day meal plan. Subscribe to the channel. Check out that meal plan in the description below and I'll talk to you very soon my friend.